Well, I'm going to try to make this as quick as I can, but uh, that won't be easy. Anyway, I'm going to start with week four. That's what we're going into, and my apologies for uh, being a, a little bit late on this. Um, I wanted to redo it so that it's easy to follow, and it just takes a lot of time to get the targeted discussions. And so I mentioned I got the juggler here. I want you to keep your uh, book discussions open as we did in week three, roughly the same topics. I've tweaked them a little bit. And that'll help you because even though we're only going to write about one theme for Essay 2, Gate and Dugas, um, the other themes that are in the book in pages, whatever it is, 120 to 168, the other themes we're going to use in later essays. So you want to keep the whole story, but we're going to zero in on Gate and Dugas. And it's the same thing, uh, critical reading, critical thinking. But we're going to do something different. I'm going to ask you to use four sources in this essay. I've provided them. I've given good context. And we'll get to the design of the essay. And as we move through this, you're going to write about two conflicting points of view. And we've got the uh, the book and some articles that create Gaten Dugas as patient zero, the villain, uh, the one who likely started the AIDS epidemic and didn't care how many people he infected. And then we have uh, subsequent writings that show that in no way did Gaten Dugas start the epidemic. Um, Schultz misrepresents him as patient zero, and he likely misses um, Gaten's being a, just a very... Uh, frightened and misinformed human being, not somebody who was hell-bent on infecting people and didn't care. And uh, also we have a, a video of uh, Gaten Dugas himself speaking, so there's a lot of cool information. I'm going to give you a lot more material than you need. Most of it isn't that long, two or three pages. Um, some of it is a little bit long, but I've broken it down to show you what to focus upon. So again, the two faces of Gate and Dugas, the villain versus this one. That's what we're going to be writing about in the next essay. Got a lineup of uh, Tuesday discussions based on the book, Wednesday based on additional readings and the book, Thursday based on additional readings. Some of them are extra credit, some of them are required. So if you don't have time to do all of the work, in preparation, you can still write a good essay, but I would recommend pushing yourself to do all of it. And this is kind of how I've laid it up. We've got the book discussion. That's going to be much the same as what we've already done um, for week three. Similar themes. I've changed them a bit. You'll see that. <clears throat> Following that, I have an explanation of uh, uh, chapter 55, 551, and 3, or the subheading Auditorium World's Eight. World Congress Center. Uh, really fascinating stuff, and uh, I'll let the voice thread or the uh, YouTube speak for itself. Um, definitely want to listen to that. Here's another um, um, interesting thing where about the time Schultz's book was published, which is uh, 1987, Schultz knew this, and other people knew that there's no way. Um, one person started the epidemic in, uh, you know, Gate and Dugas in 1980 or 81, simply because um, it was common knowledge by then that thousands of people were infected long before Gate and Dugas hit the scene. Schultz knew this. He ignored it. He created patient zero. That's the key point there, the take home. And, um, and I have a discussion for that. It's a short article on Washington Time, Washington Post. And then we continue on. This is a, a more difficult article. I've uh, given you a YouTube on how to approach it, what pages I'm going to need. Not all 35, but about uh, 13 or 14 pages out of the middle of it. And I've kind of highlighted things that you might want to look at and read carefully. So this is the counter narrative. It's an excellent article. What I mean by counter narrative is that Gate and Dugas was profoundly misrepresented by Schultz. And there's a copy of the article and then uh, the discussion itself. I only ask you to write about uh, one of these two. You don't need to write about both. Okay, so 
I give you an A or a B. And then we move into the next article. It's a short PBS article. And I give you an extra credit on that. But again, it's only a few pages. And this is uh, from 2016. And you have uh, quotes from, for instance, Dr. Fauci, um, our uh, main government official in the COVID virus, speaking about Gate and Dugas when this discovery was made in 2016, just four years ago. So really good stuff for your paper, not a very long article, and it really adds to the story. And then we'll continue, this is kind of cool, um, 1983 AIDS form, you're gonna see Gate and Dugas speaking for a few minutes, starting about minute six, and you can ask yourself, is he the cold-hearted killer, or is he basically just as confused as everybody else? You'll also see Paul Popham, up at the uh, podium for this in 1983. And this is really the only uh, um, the only time I know of where you can actually have a recording of Gate and Dugas speaking. And then finally, after you get all this information, and there's an extra credit on this, you don't have to watch the video, but I think you'd like to. Um, you know, but if you're just completely out of time with uh, the required things, you can uh, put together a good essay without the extra credit. I just think this would help. And then finally have the essay too. And I'm just gonna bring it down to the simplest form here, is that um, it's a two-part essay. Let me do it that way. Um, two faces of Baton, Gate and Dugas, okay. First two body paragraphs. Gate and Dugas the villain. You've got Schiltz, you've got the, um, pretty much you have Schiltz on that. Pardon me, I don't have a lot of Gate and the villain stuff. And you should have a, there's also a uh, 1987 New York Times article. I guess we didn't have a discussion on that, but it echoes Schiltz. Schiltz would be enough. There's a lot more material, but hey, trying to keep us focused. So two paragraphs on Gaten Dugas the villain, and then uh, two paragraphs on uh, Gaten Dugas the frightened human being. And uh, you've got uh, plenty of stuff for that. And then the goal is to use um, at least four sources in the paper. And I give you, you know, a couple of uh, examples of that here. And so you can pair quotes from the New York Times article in 1987 with the book um, to talk about Gate and the Villain. And you can pair any of these sources to talk about Gate and um, the Frightened Human Being. And that's your essay. So it's an introduction, two body paragraphs on Gate and the Bad Guy, Two body paragraphs on Gate and the Human Being, maybe four to five pages, and then a summary inclusion that includes your take on whether Gaten is a really bad person or more of a frightened individual who, like many, did not understand what was killing him. And I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to get too wordy here. I think if you go step by step and follow the discussions, um, the uh, two faces of Gaten Dugas will take shape in your mind. So I think uh, let's let the content shape your understanding. And I, I think it's going to be an interesting paper for you. Uh, we can talk about it more on Monday night. And it's Saturday morning at 8.30. I just want to give you a heads up for, um, which is our middle week. After the end of this week, we're done with half of the semester. I know it's going to take a lot of work. And again, you've got uh, till next Sunday to write this essay. So I just thought I'd let you know. And uh, again, I wish I had this a few days earlier, but I'm sure you have enough time to do a good job here.